Let's shift to another subject. I'll call it agrogenetics, the dark side of genetically manipulated food. Is that a panacea for mankind or another Pandora's box? Genetically altered corn. Here's a disturbing case study. Starlink is a proprietary corn spliced with a powerful toxin, Bacillus thuringiensis, or commonly called BT. The controversial Cry9C variety is 50 to 100 times more potent than any other BT spliced insecticide. Critics warned unfamiliar foreign proteins could set off dangerous food allergies in humans with symptoms ranging from fever, rashes, and diarrhea to anaphylactic shock and even sudden, sudden death. The FDA approved it only for animal feed. That sounds safe enough, doesn't it? Starlink corn has not yet been commercialized in any country other than the U.S. Now, this is a U.S. case study here. Kraft, the largest food corporation in America, had to recall two and a half million boxes of corn tacos. The USDA recalled all Starlink corn on 350,000 acres planted across the United States. Over 400 brands of tortillas, shells, tostadas, chips, recalled from thousands of supermarkets throughout the United States. The largest food processors, Kellogg's, ConAgra, Archer Daniels Midland, and Tyson shut down their grain mills. Avantis, Kraft, Safeway, Mission Foods, Western Family, Shaw's, Food Lion, Randall's, Kroger, Albertsons, and so forth, plus the grain elevators and farmers, face several hundred million dollars in losses. More than 28,000 truckloads, 15,000 rail cars, and 285 barges of corn tested positive for Starlink. Consumers claiming to have been poisoned by Starlink corn products have filed multi-million dollar class action lawsuits. It's on the internet. You can check it out uh, under Starlink. Now, let's talk a little bit about the international picture, the leading international producers of genetically engineered crops. The United States, 74%, Canada, 10%, Argentina, 15%. Economic sanctions could threaten a meltdown of the entire global free trade system in the minds of many. American, according to Andrew Kimball at Center for Food Safety, American consumers have been used as unknowing guinea pigs. Let's go on with this thing. The pollen from the BT corn turns out to kill monarch butterflies. Mexico is the winter home for the monarch butterflies who migrate south from Canada and the United States. It is also killing beneficial soil microorganisms and is thus damaging the entire soil food web, as well as killing beneficial uh, insects such as lacewigs and ladybugs. So there's echoes is continuing through the environment. Antibiotic marker genes, ARMs, are found in genetically engineered foods and animal feeds, and they have the ability to transfer antibiotic resistance to soil bacteria, bees, mammals, and other organisms, including humans. This gives rise to dangerous pathogens in humans that can't be killed, then, by traditional antibiotics. Major problem brewing here. The FDA admits that 8% of all U.S. children are now plagued by food allergies, and that situation is growing worse. 8%. Nutritionists warn of a suspected link between food allergies and asthma. The FDA's recall of genetically engineered nutritional supplement, um, L-tritophan, still left 37 deaths and 5,000 injuries. According to the, the most, one of the most reputable journals in the field, New England Journal of Medicine, March 14, 1996, uh, said unlabeled genetically engineered foods are uncertain, unpredictable, and untestable. And now we're getting into what they call super pests. There are now emergent markets for seeds with confirmed pedigrees for organic farming. Crop pests, beetles, bollworms, and corn borers, will inevitably develop resistance to the widely cultivated BT splice crops, creating super pests that could overwhelm organic farmers and could make organic agriculture more difficult, if not impossible. Tenth anniversary assessment. We're talking about the tenth anniversary here. Biotech beans, cotton, corn, and canola are the profit drivers at Monsanto Chemical. Also rival companies like Swiss-based uh, Syngenta and uh, Dow AgroSciences LLC, a unit of Dow Chemical Company. They genetically altered to withstand weed killers and insects, generate higher yields, and so forth. Cereal giant Kellogg Company recently announced it would start using a healthy, low linolenic 
oil derived only from Monsanto's biotech soybean in its cookies, crackers, and other food products. Less than two weeks later, rival Kraft Foods, the world's second largest food producer, said it would stop supplying all genetically engineered food products, including additives, to China due to a lack of market acceptance. PepsiCo and Coca-Cola Company have made similar pledges. In November, Swiss voters banned the planting of biotech crops for five years. In Australia, a biotech pea has caused health problems in research mice, forcing cancellation of that project. Last year, Monsanto was forced to withdraw a biotech wheat it planned to sell in the United States and Canada because of strong market opposition. Other failed projects include Monsanto's delayed ripening tomato and a healthier potato. Biotech products around the world are increasing, and this year topped more than 1 billion acres sown to soybeans, corn, cotton, canola, and other crops. In the United States, from 2004 to 2005, 52% of all corn, 79% of upland cotton, and 87% of soybeans were of biotech varieties, according to the USDA. The barriers in Europe are slowly lowering, and emerging new products may help improve acceptance. Let's take rice. Big deal. Iran last year became the first country to commercialize biotech rice, approving a pest-resistant variety. Syngenta has announced a new strain of golden rice that produced up to 23 times as much beta-carotene as previous varieties. Rice is to be available for free to research centers across Asia. And currently, the growing investment in agricultural technology in China, Argentina, Chile, and so forth, genetically modified rice is likely to gain approval in China in the near future, which could open the acceptance globally uh, in favor of the biotech food. And on it goes. Well, remember I said closed-loop systems often operate into, uh, counterintuitively. Allergies and, and cancer are regulatory anomalies and intelligent tutors. Cross-species diseases, retroviruses, we've talked about these, each one of these.